Okay, so uh, we're here today in, on a beautiful, really windy, extremely windy day in Woodbine Park, um, sort of in my neighborhood in like Leslieville slash beaches. Um, and I love coming here actually, I come here quite often on my bike. I've been finding that really supportive during the pandemic. Um, just to kind of go for a ride, clear my head, take some breaks in the day. And um, so there's been a lot going on in the last year, year and a half, almost like two years now, going on two years. And it's been difficult. Um, I myself have worked uh, part-time at University of Toronto in technology. And that's kind of like my original career, uh, business and technology. Um, and then also I'm a mindfulness teacher. I'm a registered psychotherapist and I've found that my mindfulness work as well as my psychotherapy work have like exploded during the pandemic. Like just, you know, it's a good thing for me, but it really, I really had to kind of reevaluate uh, where to spend my time and what, where to place my effort. And so it's been really important to me to do some work in terms of speaking out about some of the structural issues that I've been noticing and that have been uh, discussed a lot in the news and the media, which I think is a really good thing, but unfortunately came in the aftermath of some really sad uh, events and also discoveries, you know, such as the, the children's unmarked graves, the indigenous children, um, you know, some, some really brutal treatment of racialized people by, um, by the police and the government and so on. So that's really um, hit me sort of right in my heart. And so I've really wanted to uh, make some meaning of that and try to somehow find a way to like help others to process it as well. So for me, mindfulness has been really powerful and supportive as a tool. Uh, mindfulness and compassion both have really helped me to process what's going on in the world. Also with, a, with an understanding that I'm coming from a racialized perspective. I'm an immigrant. I come from South Africa uh, and was born during apartheid many, many years ago. And so the, the effects of that still continue to show up in my life and in the life of my family. And. Um, so that's something that I'm coming in with as an understanding, as a lived experience. And so really, my heart just goes out to anyone else that has been colonized or have, has faced the consequences of colonization, especially the indigenous people um, of Canada and, and North America. So, uh, so for me, I've been really trying to, uh, any mindfulness work that I do, any research, any writing, I'm also a master's student at uh, University of Toronto. It's actually Toronto School of Theology and Spiritual Care and Buddhist Studies. Um, I wasn't raised Buddhist. I was raised Ismaili Muslim, but I also practice uh, Buddhism as a sort of personal practice, meditation, insight meditation. And so I've been combining my mindfulness, uh, secular mindfulness practice. I teach MBSR, MBCT, Mindful Self-Compassion, combining all of that with sometimes working on the spiritual side of things in healthcare, um, as well as secularly teaching programs, eight-week programs. And then I do mindful moments at the University of Toronto and come across many students. So as a student myself, I recognize the pressures of having to pay the bills, study, you know, whether it's full-time or part-time, and then also this lack of connection that the pandemic brought, which is so crucial and so important. So really dealing with that with my clients, who many of them are young people.